So we're going to start by decorating the inside cover of your journal. So I just put my um, signatures in so I can kind of see we're trying to match something up with this. So you're going to go to the Stamperia pack that has this paper. And let's see if I can, if this is, so you're going to go to this page. I've already cut it. So you're going to go to this, this page, and when you turn it over, you're going to see this. So we are going to cut this bottom part out and keep this top part. And this top part, you're going to put it down here, and you're going to cut this at six and one quarter of an inch. I think that's what I did. So this is cut to, yeah, six and one quarter of an inch. So that's going to be our top part. Ink the edges, and that's going to go up there. Then you're going to cut a pocket. Might as well cut two of them because we're going to be using another pocket on the, the other side of the journal. So cut two pockets, seven and three-eighths by three and a half, and you're going to score it half an inch, half an inch, half an inch. Fold and burnish. Make sure you get those um, corners cut down so you don't have any bulk there and miter at the top of the pocket. And go ahead and ink that. So that's going to go down here. On top of this, you're going to go to this paper from the same Stamperia pack, the Santa one, and you're going to cut this. So this is, I believe, going to be six and a quarter. Yep, six and a quarter by two and seven eighths, because this is a three inch pocket, so two and seven eighths. That's going to go on like this. And then you're going to go to the back side of this paper and you're going to cut out a row of houses and cut this six and a quarter inches also long and start with the, the ivy. So I cut mine from the the ivy down to this little green border down here. So you'll see it. So you start with the ivy. There's like a little red line on top of the ivy. So cut right along there to the bottom of this green little dotted edge right before you get to this, this golden yellow. So from here to here, and I tried to center it so I didn't cut any houses in the middle. So I wanted all my houses with no houses cut in the middle. So I got some trees here and a tree's on here, no houses cut in the middle. So that's going to go on top of this. Oops, that's upside down, but like this. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down. I'm going to put this on top of my pocket. Adhere this on top of my pocket. About like that. And then I'm going to put my score tape and I'll be right back. So I have this piece down I have my pocket covered and I adhered the bottom part of the pocket. And like I always do, I use either um, black construction tape or scotch tape to put it down to cover this lip down here. Yeah. 
think hopefully that's not showing. Move this. I think it's okay. I'll just, just trim it a little bit. That way, when you have something to put in your pocket, it just slides right over that lip. Otherwise, you're going to be hitting that lip. So this just lets whatever you put in there just slide straight on through. So let's pull the, I'm gonna pull these tapes, and then we have this, this part done here, and now we have a nice pocket for the inside of our journal. So for the back journal cover, so here's the back of our second signature. So it's using Sparkling Christmas. So that's our signature. So here's the, the end page of the signature. So for the back um, cover of this journal part, you're going to be pulling out, I'm not sure if it went like this or on the backs, I think it went like this. This was, this was here. I just cut it right here, so that is the height. And then I trimmed it to six and a quarter inches. So six and a quarter inches. So going like that, we have our same pocket, same size as our other one. So and just make sure you ink everything, ink the edges, ink the edges of your pocket. So the pocket's going to go here. And then we're using this paper, Sparkling Christmas, cut to six and a quarter inches, just like this, six and a quarter inches by two and seven eighths. So that's going to be going like this. And then we're going to add this little strip, which is a cut. You should have one of these strips from when you were trimming this paper, so it's from this paper. And that's just going to be a little strip that sits on top of the pocket, about like that. So that is all going down like this. So, oops. So something like that. So. I'm going to adhere this down, get my pocket put in, uh, make sure you do your your construction tape or, or scotch tape to make sure you don't get that lip. And then I'll put everything together and we'll be done with this back part, back part of this journal. Okay, so we're ready to start with the front cover. So this is the front cover of your photo album. So this is kind of what it's going to look like. So let's take this apart. Start from the base layer, which is going to be the solid cranberry. So I just cut the solid cranberry so it fits here. So this, instead of eight and a half, it's eight and three eighths. And instead of six and a half, it since this is six and a half, this is going to be six and three eighths. So that is going to be inked and adhered. So that's the bottom. Then you're going to use the candy stripe paper. This one. So the size of this is six and between one eighth and one quarter. That's where it measures out by eight and one eighth plus one sixteenth. I just kind of cut it to fit within the margins of the cranberry. 
So that's going to be your next piece. So you're going to ink all of those edges. And I guess we can build everything on top of this and just not fix it to this yet. So that's probably what I'll do. So that is our next piece. Then you are going to get this from the 8x8 collection. So it's just this piece. I cut it and inked the edges and I want it to mat it on the gold cardstock, uh, but I'd cut through it so I didn't quite have one whole piece to ink through it. So I found two pieces and kind of glued them together with a little of the burgundy showing through because I matted both of these on this card. This card measures basically five by four and not quite four and a half. It's like one sixteenth less than four and a half. But once again, if you have a whole piece, you don't need to be doing this. You can just fit your your Santa Claus to a full sheet of the gold paper. But I thought that was actually kind of cool to have the little um, burgundy showing through. See how that looks. So that's going to be sitting somewhere up here. Then I wanted to break up the stripe. So I cut another piece. This is one and three eighths inches wide by six and basically six and a quarter. So that is going to be somewhere down here, just to kind of break up the stripes. Not sure exactly if that's going to be where it's going to be, but next I got this from the 8x8 collection. It says Letters to Santa, um, and that's where I cut it, so it is measuring two and three-eighths wide by four and a half in this direction. And then I rounded the corners, my small corner rounder, inked everything, and then I backed it on a little strip. I had another strip of the gold paper. Um, this little strip is basically one inches wide by six, almost six inches long. And what I did is I centered this little card after it was inked and after this was inked onto this gold strip of paper, kind of in the middle. And then I added, I, I did some um, punches with the with the We Are Memories stub punch. So I just did the stump stub punches in here. And then I just added some brads in those corners. So there's the brads. Cut off their tails a little bit, snipped them, put them down as flat as I could. And I just put some construction, black construction tape on the back just to get everything centered. And then that is going to be centered on that strip down like that. Then we have, I wanted to put something in here. So we have, I cut these out from, this is from the eight by eight, these stamps. So we have four stamps, and I just picked two, a, a green one and a, a red one. It doesn't really matter. I just want to make sure their five cents shows, however you put them together. 
So let's see. We could either do, nope. I want the red to go first. So red. Yeah, that's not going to work. How did I have this? Maybe I did have it like this. No, I need to have to have the red inside. Oops, have to have the red inside for contrast. So I'll do it something like that. So this is kind of the layout of this page. So obviously everything's got to be centered. So what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and build this page um, and just build it on top of the burgundy and just not affix it yet. So I <clears throat> glued, glued, <laughs> I used my score tape everything down here so this is ready to be applied here when so that's going to be like that and now we have to do this spine so you're going to cut a piece of paper that's the same length as this which is eight and three eighths and you're going to cut the width um, since this is a one and a half spine, uh, one and three eighths. And you're going to use the cranberry paper, the same that you used back here. That's going to go here. So you ha should have plenty of this paper left. This is from the 12 by 12 collection. It's this one. What I want to do is I want to center my my piece here, there's my center. I want to center it on a green block. So when I cut my paper, it will, that green block will be centered. So what it looks like is, um, it's in between th this green line and this green line. And then we'll probably have to take off a little bit on each edge. But I want to get that kind of centered. And maybe I'll draw a line down the edge here. And put that in the trimmer. And then I'm going to need to trim off a little bit on each side. Um, so it can fit within the confines of this paper. Do you need to do all this hassle? No, I just want this green block to be centered on here. I just think it would look much better. So I am going to center that, draw my line, cut it, and then um, trim the edges just a little bit. So here's my piece. So now it's basically, you can see that it's centered, so I just wanted this line to be in the center, so that looks pretty good. So I'll ink that um, and adhere it down to the burgundy piece, and then that is going to go there, but we're not going to put that down yet. But you can go ahead and ink these and get this adhered down onto the burgundy piece, and then put these two to the side. We still need to work on the front cover of our journal. Okay, so now we're working on the front cover of the journal part of this whole album. So it's going to be something like this. And now, now this I may make a little bit smaller. Um, I got these from uh, a digi kit that has a bunch of different um, plates of different sizes. You just print them out on cardstock and cut them out. And I just add a journal. I put it in my um, Word and just put 
journal over it. So I may make that a little bit smaller. You can resize them in Word too. Just resize the JPEG. So I'm not sure that might be resized a little bit. Might be, looks a little too big. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know anymore. My brain is fried. I was actually thinking that this size would better. Um, so I might consider this one, but. I liked the color on the, anyway, throw that out. <laughs> Figure out that later. But what we're going to do is you're going to start with this paper. It's the gold paper from, oh, is it, this is Graphic 45. This is the Graphic 45 paper. So this is from your patterns and solids. So you're just going to lay that down there. This is um, six and three eighths by um, eight and a half, eight and three eighths, right? Because this is eight and a half, so this is eight and three eighths. So you're going to cut that out and you're going to ink the edges and make sure you always ink the edges on your, your back um, panel too. So that's the first piece. And then you're going to get this from the eight by eight of the Graphic 45, this paper. And this measures basically six and a quarter wide by six and, six and a half, six and five eighths. Looks like six and five eighths. That's going to be going up like this. Then you're going to get this paper from um, the Chiobella collection. So it's this paper and you're going to be getting this image and you are going to be cutting this part out of it. So you're just making a frame of this image. So this measures Two five and seven eighths by basically five and seven eighths. It's a square. So good. It's a square. That is going to go like this. Now, since this paper is only an eight by eight. It wasn't going to cover the whole distance. So I cut off a piece down from here, right there. You can see where it was once connected. I cut it and this piece is going to go down here. So it's just the remnant of what was left from here. So if you need to know the, the width on this is one inch. And the, the, the height is one inch. The width is the same as this. So that's going to give us that little space in between here. And then this is where I'm going to put a book plate of some sort. Haven't figured it out yet. That's going to say journal. So that we can figure out later. That that we don't need to put on right away. So get all these pieces um, adhered to your base. Do not put it down on here yet because we still have to figure out that ribbon and how that ribbon is going to be closing up this whole thing. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna put this all together. So this is how your front cover or your um, do, -si do is going to be so when you open up this here's the spine to it so when you open this up then you're going to be in your your journal part of the of the do, -si -do album so this kind of goes together right there 
and then this wraps this way you're going to have this spine with this front cover of the album itself so it's going to be like this so the spines are basically the same they're they're this, this is out of the 12 by 12 this is from the 8 by 8 but they're basically the same So the way this ribbon's going to be, so here's, this is going, this would be the front cover right here. Here's the front cover, and then this would be the back. And then you have your, your spine here, like that. So the ribbon's going to be running either underneath the spine or over the spine, I'm not sure, but it's gonna be running underneath the covers. And then it's going to be tying up up front here. And then when you open this up, you're going to have the mini album. Everything is perfect except for this. This is going to drive me crazy and there's nothing I can do. If I could, I'd take out those, these little grommets, take them out and put either black or antique brass, but I can't even take them out. So I've already kind of ruined this spine. Uh, I, anyway, that's gonna drive me crazy. I wish they were dark instead of the shiny silver. Anyway, so now I just have to find a proper ribbon that will work with our album. Okay, so I think I'm finally done with what we're, I'm going to be doing. So I have not adhered this yet. Here's the front. Front. Um, so this is how it came out. I think that is so cute. Cutie, cutie patootie. Um, I have not adhered the spine yet. Just wrapping the ribbon, trying to see how it would look with the ribbon. I thought that was pretty with the ribbon going around it. And then the ribbon goes back under this back part, which is for our journal. I ended up um, filling this in, but there was a space here, that yellow space. And I just used a little strip from the Graphic 45 paper. And I just thought that looked pretty with Christmas right in the middle. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be putting my journal, I've got some different journals, tags that I was messing with. I was going to put it right there, but I'm not sure because I actually like it when it says Christmas. So for now, I'm just going to kind of leave it like that. So that's what it's going to look like. And guess what else I spent like eight hours no joke eight hours i surgically removed those grommets that were causing me such angst i cut them out and had to repair my spine there's a little bump where i repaired it so it's not squared off perfectly up here and there's a little seam inside here that I had to I put a little bit of a strip there um, to cover up the seam where it was seamed together on the inside. But once we get our signatures in here, this isn't even going to be noticeable. But yeah, um, hopefully you don't make that mistake when you're punching your holes you make them i wish i could see better with that we are memories keeper hole puncher I, i'm looking straight down at it i'm measuring it and i punch it and it's off and when it's off just by a little bit it drives me crazy so um i should probably use a pokey tool so i can do it 
do it exactly where I want it. So I think I am done. Um, I'm going to adhere everything down. First, I gotta get the ribbon down and then put my pages on and then I'll be back.